So I thought I was done with floating point and I was just sending it to testers to um, just make sure I wasn't going to hit any major like bugs on other people's machines. One thing I found out with heat signature recently was that if you run it on someone else's machine it doesn't match their screen resolution, which is the kind of thing you don't find out when you're just playing it yourself. So I just wanted to do a quick check before I released it and with a jam game you, or at least I, don't normally do testing because you just don't have time. Like if you actually if you were to wait for the feedback before you did anything else, uh, you would be way behind. And if you try and do other stuff while you're waiting for the feedback, I don't know, it can get messy. Um, and also just finding testers and getting out of them and stuff is just um, on a different time scale to the, the kind of intensive game jam stuff. And this had started as a jam game, so I was thinking of it as that, and I was thinking like, half, eh, I don't really need to test it, and half, well, I just have time to test it. Uh, neither of those things were true. <laughs> so um, I sent it to, I just asked on Twitter for like volunteers, and I got about 20 people. Um, uh, and I said it to them and just said, you know, can you let me know just does it run? And I just just got curious and I ended like, oh, also, what do you think? Um, and I was thinking, like, I'll just hopefully get some bug reports back or nothing at all. Um, and what I actually got was a huge range of feedback from, including, I mean, lots of compliments, but lots of complaints too about everything from controls to balance to difficulty to um, uh, understanding the game and uh, all this stuff. And uh, a lot of it was stuff that I, I mean, you always get feedback where you, like only one person had this complaint and you kind of feel like if you change the game to match their complaint or to fix their complaint that it would kind of take away something of the essence of the game. So there's a lot of, lots of those where I just thought, nah, I'm probably not going to do anything about that. But there's also a lot of just like major consensus. One of the things I didn't expect at all was um, uh, the way it works in Floating Point and the way it's always worked in the Grappling Hook game is there's a button for firing and releasing the grapple. So you click it once to fire and then you click it again to disconnect. And then the other button on your mouse is for retracting and paying out. So you click closer to suck in and further away to pay out. Um, and for floating point I was finding like W and S were better for, for retracting and paying out. Um, so I added those as an alternate control but kept the other one in. But the connecting and disconnecting with the same button, people were really thrown by. People don't expect that at all. And uh, lots of people said they had real trouble getting used to that. And uh, I had a bunch of people suggesting alternate control systems. One of which was um, that every time, like left click could be grappling and it would always fire a grapple rope even if you already have one. So firing would disconnect and reconnect all in one go, um, which is pretty extreme. And then a couple of other people just saying like, uh, don't care about that, but I just want the button that connects the grapple should only ever connect the grapple, it shouldn't also disconnect, like I want a separate button for disconnecting. Um, and neither of those sounded like they would work to me, because um, the second one I was thinking like an extra disconnect button that's adding controls and it gets complicated then. But I tried both. Um, so the first thing I tried was the re-roping thing, where every time you click it disconnects and reconnects. And uh, it definitely let you do much more kind of, you can pick up speed more easily, um, and it's certainly simpler. Um, and I was keeping retracting and paying out on a different um, key, which is a little bit weird. Uh, but it let you do really, really silly things like um, you could just, if you like, want to go underneath the ceiling and you want to keep level, you could just rapidly click at every single stage, like tracking your own progress so that you eventually, effectively have a line going between you and the ceiling that just moves with you, <laughs> which is really, really strange. And you could get around that by introducing like a cooldown time, but then you're actually blocking a control from working for the sake of preventing an exploit, and I don't like that kind of thing. I prefer controls to be consistent and instantly responsive. Um, so then uh, I tried just having uh, grapple on one on left mouse and disconnect on right mouse, but that leaves you with no... Uh, you can't use either of those for paying out or, or um, retracting. And so that's a problem. You'd have to use keys separately, which felt weird. But one of the other things people kept suggesting was like, uh, I think in the Spider-Man games, when you fire a rope, you're instantly pulled towards it just a little bit, just to give you kind of make it feel elastic. Uh, lots of people wanted that. I don't really like that because I specifically don't want the rope to feel elastic. It's one of the things I had to fight like tooth and nail to stop Unity from doing. Was any kind of physics, or any kind of force-based approach, always makes the rope feel bouncy. And the time when it suddenly started feeling really nice to me was when it stopped feeling bouncy at all. And it's just a piece of string, and it just stops you at your extent and there's no bounce at all. Um, but I did try having, when you connect your rope it immediately sucks you, like connecting and sucking in would be the same thing. And then I thought maybe the disconnect button could be if you hold it down then it pays out the rope. 
But somebody said something really surprising in the testing, which uh, at first was surprising and then was completely uh, obvious. Uh, they said, I don't think I've ever used the paying out button. You know, the button for extending your rope. And I was like, oh, that's silly, well, why don't you use that? And I thought, no, wait, neither have I. <laughs> that was like absolutely vital to the grappling game because it was about lowering your friends down on ropes and having them dangle over things. And uh, it's like a key part of it. But actually in Voting Point, I've never like had to extend the rope you just retract it, and then if you're attracting it too much, you stop retracting. The only time you'd ever need to pair it out was if you'd like accidentally retracted too far, but by that point it's almost always too late, because it, particularly if you're swinging around something, you won't even get much extra length, you're usually in kind of free fall, so paying out the rope doesn't push you away from the grapple. And yeah, I realised I never used that key. <laughs> I could just take that key out. And uh, so yeah, the way it works now is that grappling, uh, left-clicking, fires a grapple, and retracts it. If I made it always fire a grapple, then there was something you couldn't do with that system. It meant you couldn't stop retracting and then start retracting again. You'd have to recast your grapple, and that was really awkward. Um, so left click will, if you don't have grapple fired, it fires it. If you do have grapple fired, it retracts it. And in my head, that doesn't sound right at all. That sounds like, ah, this button does two different things in different contexts. In practice, it feels really nice. <laughs> it feels incredibly intuitive, responsive, fast. Uh, you can do everything that I wanted to do with the previous system. Um, and even the thing about having a separate button to disconnect, once I had that in there and tried it out, I'm like, yeah, you guys are right, this is much nicer. <laughs> it makes much more sense just to have, like, this button is dedicated to disconnecting and it always, when you want to do really elaborate stuff, like rapidly roping onto something, swinging a little bit, disconnecting, roping onto something else, swinging a little bit, disconnecting again, it means you're alternating left and right, and that actually feels really nice. It feels very technical and kind of uh, a finesse thing. And so I could play much, much better. I was instantly much better at the game. Um, I also, while I was at it, I replaced the retracting noise because it used to be the sound of a rope going through a pulley, a uh, spool type thing, um, in a kind of rickety way, which really didn't match the kind of digital aesthetic of the game and also made it feel old and kind of creaky. Um, so I like, just changed it with a weird like static clicking noise of something ticking past. Um, and that made it feel much more powerful even when it wasn't. <laughs> and then I did increase the power as well by a lot. and. Uh, just the fact that you're always retracting as soon as you connect a rope by default, like if you click and hold and that's what happens and you find yourself clicking and holding rather than tapping and releasing. Um, just means you spend a lot more time pulling yourself towards things and you pick up speed naturally faster anyway. So if I didn't change the value at all, you already picked up more speed even though you could have been picking up that same amount of speed with the previous control system. And the sound made it feel more powerful and I did also increase the power. <laughs> the combination of those things just changed it into a totally different game and suddenly it just felt awesome to swing around. Just like so much more responsive and fun, felt like a kind of an arcadey game. Um, and it was great and of course I was, because I was doing so much better, all the points bars were raising up like enormously and I was doing um, uh, really well all the time and I kind of balanced that down a bit. And then I was, it was just much more tactile, much more fun to play with, but after a while of playing it, I noticed I wasn't having, I wasn't having any awesome moments. Like in the last video, I talked about there's just these moments of elegant movement where you just miss a block, and then you like uh, you're just about to hit another one, and you pull yourself back, and then you you know arc carefully around these very tight spaces in very tricky moments, and you just happen to get it exactly right, and you feel like you're constantly dodging these bullets, and um, uh, your movement was the exact right path, and you kind of architected it through carefully placing your grapples and planning your trajectories uh, in a kind of completely uh, subconscious, intuitive flow state. And that's what I really loved about it. And when, it, when those happened, I would always have a strong, like, um, real-life reaction. I'd always be like, oh, look at that! <laughs> or just, like, laughing out loud, like, oh my god, that was perfect! Or if I failed, I'd be like, oh my god, that was so nearly perfect! Um, and that wasn't happening anymore. I was doing well all the time, and it felt nice, but I was just always doing well. And I never had those moments of near-miss, and I never had those moments of... Um, disaster. And it took me a while to figure out what was happening, because it was, as far as I knew, the rules were the same. I hadn't changed any rules, I'd just, you know, changed the controls, which were better, and nothing about the rules had made it any more forgiving, and so I just, I scaled down the, the points, um, uh, the rate at which the things decayed got faster, and that made it proportionally harder, so it kind of balanced out. I wasn't getting much higher scores than previously once I'd compensated for that. But the experience was just like flatter. There were less highs and less lows overall. It was just always doing quite well. And eventually I realized that when I was bumping into things, the bars were going down and then they're going straight back up. And it was quite a subtle thing. 
but it was to do with a change I'd made to the formula, just a kind of a behind the scenes refactoring thing about how I handle different variables. And the one that was accumulating over time wasn't the one that I was reducing by 20% when you bumped into something. I was reducing a temporary one, so it had no actual effect. It was reducing it and then going straight back up. And this was a really weird thing to discover because as soon as I fixed that and I put it back to reducing your accumulated points by 20% every time you bump into something, uh, immediately all those moments of near misses and, and failure and uh, narrow success and beautiful movement and flow state and everything all came back and it was fantastic. But I didn't think they ever went away. <laughs> like the, the penalty for hitting something had gone in the code and it wasn't happening. So it makes perfect sense if like testers are complaining about this because they wouldn't know to avoid things if the rules weren't telling them to avoid things. You know, if the game doesn't punish you for it, you never learn to avoid it. But I had already learned to avoid it from previously playing it, and my avoiding of it was what was leading to those moments of near misses and, um, and feeling so great about pulling something off without hitting anything. And in theory, I should have been playing the same way as I was before, because I genuinely believed that hitting things reduced my points by 20%. But they weren't reducing it by 20%, and some, on some intuitive, like, animal level, I just internalized that rule without, ever, without it ever reaching my higher brain. If I'd noticed that was happening, I would have fixed it, I would have known there was a bug. But I didn't notice, and I just changed the way I played, and the way I played involved hitting things a lot more. Just very subtly, I just started to change my playstyle to a much more reckless one, and I was swinging around much quicker, but I was bouncing off things all the time, and so my movement wasn't as beautiful. It was reckless and clumsy. Um, but the game was always saying, you're doing well, you're doing well. And so that, like, that thing I talked about last time, that the kind of joining the um, cool movement to high scoring movement had actually broken a little bit. And I didn't notice because I was still focusing on the high scoring movement. And I was just having, it was hard to tell because I was having so much more fun with the controls uh, than I was before. Like that part of it was so much better and the feel of it was so much better. That it took me a while to notice that the kind of, the logic of it and the kind of the way it was incentivizing me to play wasn't as cool as the way it was before. And like I say, when I put that back, it suddenly just felt fantastic. It <laughs> solved all the problems. Um, and of course, combined with all the new tweaks I made in between, suddenly started to feel really, really cool.